hello. Welcome to Breathwork 9, healing with breathwork and other integrative modalities. This is the third session. I'm Mari, and I have here today with me Ren Butler, Dr. Ren Butler. And we just wanted to go into some of the highlights from the Psychedelic Science Conference, because that was just an amazing time. Uh, we're still all kind of reeling from that. And then also talk about Groff Studies, because we're super stoked about that coming up here this fall uh, and just a couple other things. But first, Ren, I wanted to just allow you to introduce yourself a little bit and share some uh, important highlights about you. Hi, Mari. Uh, great to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, Mari and I and a number of our colleagues got to spend some quality uh, time together at the uh, Psychedelic Science 2023 um, it, conference in uh, Denver about three weeks ago, and that was just amazing. We, we were part of a pre-conference Groff Breathwork workshop, which was very exciting. Uh, Mari and I are the administrators for a new Groff Studies graduate program as well uh, through Ubiquity University, and we're handling the, the Groff-related content uh, along with our colleague uh, Jay Dufresho, um, three of us, and uh, there's an eight-week course starting um, on October 1st in Groff Studies, and it's open to the general public. Uh, we if you're a therapist or a sitter or an interested seeker, journeyer, we would love to have you in the course. You'll learn a lot about safe and effective approaches to um, inner journeys and supporting others. Yeah, so Dr. Wren, uh, you have been doing archetypal astrology for how long? And also you started the breath work back in... 80s or something like that right yeah yeah um um the fall of 1979 is when i got interested in astrology and then i i went to esalen as a work scholar in uh, december 1979 i was there for a year that time got to meet rick tarnas and had many inspiring conversations with him he was incredibly generous with his time and was so enthusiastic about archetypal astrology and Stan's work, Stan Groff's work. I, I had the good fortune of being in a Groff month long with Stan and Christina Groff in um, the fall of 1980. Um, it was the same month that uh, Ronald Reagan was elected. So it was a, two totally different things were kind of happening in my universe at that moment. Um, and then um, did a number of other uh, breathwork sessions at Esalen and then in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and then certified in 1989, the second uh, cohort in the fall of 89. Yeah. yeah, right. So long, long time. That's just fantastic. I love it. You know, I mean, we've got our uh, breathwork sort of, um, I don't know if we'd call them, we don't really want to call ourselves elders, right? <laughs> but that have been doing it since the beginning of the day, the time when it all came together with the training. Yeah, so, well, uh, I'm getting up there. That's for sure. <laughs> we all are, brother. We all are. <laughs> how it is, you know. <laughs> Maybe the breath work though keeps us young. Let's let's hope for that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's interesting. You should say that, uh, Doctor Mari. Is that? Uh... No, you, I'm good with Mari. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so am I. Um, we can't necessarily extend our lifespan. I mean, I think breathwork and psychedelic therapy could heal a number of physical psychosomatic conditions. So we need a lot more research into that. But I think that's very possible. But the main thing we can do for sure is to widen our life, to deepen our life. So it's not like we're trying to get more time. We're trying to get more out of the time we have. And in holotropic states, Stan Groff's term, moving toward wholeness states of consciousness, we can, we can have experiences from other times, earlier times in our family history, our ancestral racial 
collective memories or phylogenetic memories even and uh, identify with the consciousness of other people groups of people and it can greatly enrich our experience of the present moment we can find new ways to enjoy the present moment you know as as a, a moment in evolutionary history and all the different archetypal and geopolitical forces that are happening at a given time that are trying to move in you know towards some kind of positive um resolution point for our species and so mm -hmm. so yeah. many personal and collective benefits to doing this work i agree 100 percent. yeah and just that aspect of presence right being able to really just be in that in the moment not in the past not in the future and using the breath i know for me that's one of the things that i do on a regular daily basis is go to my breath just the inhale and the exhale and just be present in my body and uh, notice where my thoughts are if they trail off then i can just come right back through my breath so yeah i really appreciate you bringing that up that's that's awesome uh yeah and that you know, I, I know with the archetypal astrology, like you're saying, that also can enhance how we, how conscious we are, how self-aware, uh, even collectively, not just personally. So I think that's a really great advantage to have. Um, do you want to say a little bit more about that since, you, you know, that's kind of your forte? Sure. Uh, one of the metaphors I like is we're we're driving our car on the road of life and we have to keep our hands on the wheel and and you know watch the road conditions and uh and so on but astrology is like a map of the road ahead and it can help us to know when maybe there are straightaways and maybe there's uh curves in the road that we should be aware of um it doesn't take the place of being you know present and conscious but it is additional layer of information that can help us navigate the twists and turns of life and to enjoy and appreciate it's a great way to learn how uh, good days to do psychedelic healing sessions or breathwork healing sessions to choose good days we're, we're coming up next year to three years of a saturn neptune conjunction and periods when mars aligns with that saturn neptune in a triple alignments um i'll be posting those uh those dates you know coming up are times when we really should exercise more caution that's the one alignment of three planetary archetypes that is a little more challenging so that that will be a great use of astrology coming up it it it's illuminating um and you know when i just remember my all the conversations i had with rick tarnas he was so inspired and on fire with the illumination of astrology yeah yeah absolutely um well that sounds interesting i'm looking forward to some of your posts on that coming up next year that transit and you mentioned um noting when is a good time to do these holotropic states of consciousness or or um, accessing our psychedelic uh you know uh whatever psychedelic is our preference right and and going inward and um gaining from some therapeutic use of psychedelics so just quickly leading into that you know that conference was just epic really i feel like it was i feel like everybody was high in a mile high city and nobody was using any kind of substance it was just this natural vortex of energy that we all were drawing from and and you know it, it's been a couple of weeks but still like we're all kind of coming down from it as well just the different people that i talked to um and i just ask you in a minute what the highlights were for you but uh for me you know just that breath work 
session that we did in the pre-conference, 250 people. And I'm so fortunate to be uh, partnering with you, facilitating our group, 20 people. We had little pods just for people that don't know weren't there. Um, and then to have, you know, the man himself, Stan Groth there with us uh, and Brigitte just was really exceptional and so heartwarming for me. Um, just really, I just, you know, kind of, it's just going to be such a beautiful memory for the rest of my life. And uh, I hope, I hope it continues. I hope we continue to do it into next year, but um, how about you? And then just being all with the friends, you know, that we've made over the years and uh, being able to hang out together, have some fun and be like mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah. It's mile high city. And I mean, I come from a country that uses metric. So, you know, we got really high, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, the social side of it was fantastic to see friends and, and new friends and to meet, many people for the first time and seeing the groffs and Stan's enthusiasm he still has the, the light in his eyes for this beautiful work rick doblin calls it a you know a, it was a breakthrough conference and i feel like this was the year when it it's past the point of no return in a, in a sense this psychedelic renaissance that's happening one of the highlights for me mari was um, the opening plenary talk uh, and uh, the uh, Republican governor of Texas uh, formerly uh, Rick Perry um, was there and then the the present governor of uh, Colorado and Rick P Perry spoke I had tears running down my cheeks because he's a very conservative uh, you know member of American society and you know represents that side of of the culture but he is deeply involved in trying to help vets young vets suffering from ptsd especially people who went to iraq and afghanistan and he said that they tried every kind of modality they they took these young people to to these different modalities to try to help them and he said that while there was some probably some incremental overall effect it was when they they got to do psychedelic assisted therapy that the the breakthroughs happened and that they were able to return to their families he said their families got them back and at that moment i just I was just weeping you know like uh because when when someone like that sees the benefit of this type of effective therapy then you know that it it is going to happen and I'm just so proud of Rick Doblin and all the people at MAPS for, for what happened. Uh, one, one of the other ways I saw this conference, Mari, was for Terminator fans out there, it reminded me of something like, uh, you know, if they had a Terminator 10, um, you know, T10 or T12, wh which resolved the entire series and it was a happy ending for humanity and, and Skynet didn't actually destroy the world after all and uh, it, it, it was just like a dream come true to see you know there were thirteen thousand of us there and the vast majority were therapists psychiatrists mds and uh, also psychedelic entrepreneurs and, and so on and um just to see imagine the good that that many people can can do and all of their colleagues spread through the world as they work with clients around the world and and help to legalize these medicines. It's just incredible. Yes, definitely. Uh, absolutely um, outstanding. I mean, it's almost like there's no words, kind of like after a holotropic state or, you know, after using psychedelics, you just can't really find the words that felt like that. I mean, I really felt like we were all like in an altered state, you know, it was, it was really fantastic. Um, and yeah, I just was thinking about what you said with the use of, um, you know, psychedelics for, for veterans 
because I too had a reaction from not necessarily the opening, uh, or I didn't sit and wait for Rick Perry uh, to talk. I, I sort of moved on, but um, there's two things I want to say there, but I want to say that I watched the documentary on Ibogaine and that's when the tears came for me because so much uh, profound healing from ibogaine aft, and it's been researched since psychedelics was legal, so back in the early 70s, and yet still today they're trying to bring it in and legalize it. Um, but you know, it's bound to happen. It's a natural plant. Um, but I had the same reaction. I was just, tears were just streaming down from the healing benefits and people that um, even in recovery can gain, you know? So that's a huge thing as well, that there aren't many uh, like 100% recovery benefits from the, uh, the, the protocol that's used out there nowadays for addiction, right? So we have gotten so many results, so many positive results of people recovering from their addictions as well. And, you know, um, well, I just know from research, one out of five people are struggling, struggling from mental imbalance. And, um, you know, addiction is one of those things, PTSD, uh, just the stress of every day that we've been putting on ourselves. So any kind of uh, relief that people can get, and if it's, if people are getting this relief, then by all means, I don't see why we're not using the um, therapeutic aspects of psychedelics. And everyone has their own preference. Do you have a preference? <laughs> well, uh, and, and what many people don't realize is that that effective psychedelic assisted therapy helps people to be better contributors in their society they don't want to like drop out of civilization they want to contribute something to cooperate to help solve problems to find meaningful work to create solutions to things the ancient greeks are cultural forebears uh, of western civilization in many ways use psychedelics in responsible ritual ways like in the Eleusinian mysteries for you know 1900 years that went and but they still were able to fight wars when they were invaded by the Persians and and so on it didn't just turn everybody into passive resign stoners far from it Stan Groff makes the point that you know we're meant to to go into these holotropic states it seems to be built into the human being that we we function on as high and a positive and satisfying a level as we can in our everyday lives but we also need to periodically enter holotropic states to find deeper meaning in life to solve some of our deepest problems and uh these two modes the the everyday mode of consciousness and the the, the non-ordinary state or holotropic so state are very complementary. They help wow. each other. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I have I agree, you know, Stan's perspective, of course, is um, you know, has the most uh what is the word I'm thinking of? Um he's been doing, you know, this research for 50 years, but I like to think of it as our birthright that we have it as our birthright to access these holotropic or non-ordinary states of consciousness. So um, if we all had the chance, and I know I remember Stan saying, uh, you know, back when it was 20 years ago or something in my, my time of training with him, that if everyone as an adult was able to access these states of consciousness that the world would be a better place like before they became a parent right the world would just be or a different place anyway more balanced um more conscious more aware and um probably with a lot more compassion as well 
Absolutely. So, yeah, and ecological sensitivity. Um, you know, people naturally feel connected with nature and with other living things, plants and animals, and and want to try to live in harmony with nature, to live a more satisfying life in greater harmony with nature. It also psychedelic therapy and breathwork uh, can help uh, reduce aggression in in our lives um, and also greed insatiable greed those these are some of the most uh, immediate benefits for for this kind of work and we really need that as a as a species now greed and aggression are the two main problems threatening our species so th this work has benefits not only for us as individuals but also for society right yeah yeah thank you for sharing that it's so important um so you brought up nature and i i feel like i'm a nature loving fool at least that's uh how i identify <laughs> but um i'm in oregon right now I'm, uh for those who don't know i live in florida on the nature coast of florida and I'm in Oregon uh, watching my son's dog and I just went on an awesome hike in the temperate rainforest on the Oregon coast in Yahats. And I'm excited because we're doing this nature immersion next May, you and I and many others that will be joining us uh, for a three to four day immersion along with the breath work because um they say that you know being in nature also changes our uh our our body's chemistry in ways that non-ordinary states of consciousness do so it's a double effect right it's going to be even more beneficial more powerful and uh I just wanted to mention that because I'm excited about it. I'm getting all the details together and, uh, you know, looking forward to others joining us and um, just putting that dream out there so that we can all uh, be together and, and heal. That'll be a great workshop in May. Um, I hope you can come and join us. And um, Mari will be providing information about the the dates and the the website uh page for that please come take our eight week class in Groff study starting october 1st it's sundays uh at 11 a.m pacific time till uh, 12 45 followed by live q a <clears throat> it'll be absolutely packed with very practical information about holotropic and psychedelic states and how to navigate them effectively and safely support others I'm also doing a, a 22 week course in archetypal and holotropic astrology starting September 30th. And we'd love to have you in that. That's Saturdays at uh, noon Pacific time. Mari has some great elective courses also that she's te teaching uh, the power of myth and archetype. And um, I think there's one on the goddess Nana. Um, uh, yeah, uh, exciting. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming yeah. up. Thank you for mentioning that. And uh, yeah, for those who don't know, the website is groffstudies.com. And your website is renholler.com. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 My my dissertation's on there. Uh, it's on the books page down at the bottom if you want to read my dissertation. Some of the original research I did for it was on the Mayan macro astrology based on some a small amount of research that Stan Groff did but in a great article that he published in 2012 um, and I expanded it farther back in time uh, further back in time so like 100,000 years back of these major alignments and cultural and archaeological milestones so that was one of the things in the dissertation and uh, yeah my course info is on there as well Awesome. Thank you so much, Ren, for taking the time and uh, being with me and going over some of these really fun things going on and fun things that we have already done and so much to look forward to. 
And um, the next podcast that I have uh, scheduled will be uh, on nature as integration. So I hope that you can join for that. And then if I can get my pin my son down, I might just even get into how breath work and surfing can really be super uh, eye-opening, more conscious, more aware. He's doing, he's, he's schooled me on his way of breathing when he's surfing. So I thought that might be a fun thing to talk about as well. So again, thank you, Ren. And um, yeah. Very thanks welcome. Everyone. Thanks thank everyone you. for joining. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a great summer and I hope to see you in the fall. Yes, definitely. Sounds good. All right. Blessings. <laughs>